there's a seems to be very clear alignment with when therapy started and when you started becoming more open in uh, media conversations. Yeah, that's true. I started therapy in 20, uh, 2012 and it really started working like 2014 in there somewhere. And yeah, and I mean, all these things I wanted to do, for instance, professionally that I wanted to do before, but it, it wouldn't work out. Uh, started happening, you know, better film roles and so forth. Um, he thought it was for <laughs> and he was, you know, like he said that on like, I think he said that on like a TED talk or something. I was very self-destructive when I was younger. I, uh, that means what? Well, it's something called escape behavior. Like for instance, if you're a young kid in Sweden and your dad can come into your room and beat you up anytime he wants to and you can't do anything about it, you can't run away, you can't fight back, and you fr it's called freeze, you freeze, your whole the emotions get locked inside you, and you try to escape it by alcohol is a good way. I mean, organized violence is good too, like boxing, martial arts, and that's why I became a fighter, and that's why I try to get it out through acting as well, and also drinking too much and kind of abusing my own body. And a lot of that disappeared after I did therapy. The tools that therapy taught you would be what? To be honest with yourself and to uh, and not to be afraid of, of uh, examining, you know, the, darks, the dark areas and, and the pain inside. Because um, there's a lot of strength in that. Everybody has problems. Everybody has has a tough childhood in their own way, you know, and yeah, I just think uh, if you don't, if you don't work on yourself, then it's gonna, the older you get, the more it, it rules your life, and the more you become a, a slave to it, it takes over, and you, you end up doing things you don't really want to do, but you have no choice. What do you think's been your single lowest point, and how you got through it? The single lowest point was probably when I was married. I lived in Spain. Uh, my wife didn't want to move back to LA. I, I'd retired 30 years too early. I retired when I was like 35, moved to Spain. Um, and uh, financially, I wasn't doing well. I, I wasn't getting the movies anymore because I was too far away and I had to get divorced. And I didn't. And, and, I hadn't dealt with the PTSD, I hadn't dealt with my, my trauma, and I was just basically, um, yeah, I was kind of suicidal and self-destructive and drinking and, and, and you know, uh, having affairs and just uh, being a really bad husband and a really bad dad, you know. I mean, that was a low point in my life. I, I, I didn't have the tools to deal with it. I was just almost hoping that I wasn't going to wake up. One really? day after one of these drinking bouts where I would just disappear for a couple of days from my home and my kids didn't know where I was and friends were looking for me and yeah. Did, did you ever try taking your own life? Not, not in the way, you know, like I want to do it because I would have probably succeeded but <laughs> because I'm kind of a, you know, result-oriented guy, you know, but uh no, I think I, I, I tried to sort of, I, I was very close, I think, by just, you know, drinking and not taking care of myself, sort of. Just how how bad did that get? <sighs> well, you got bad, we just end up with some woman who I never met or can't remember anything about, you know, and just, just be gone with her for like maybe a day or two, just drop my kids up to school and then just go on a bender for a couple of days to a point where some of my friends would find me finally and pull me out of bed and I would stay with their, at their house for you know, until I was, you know, sober and well enough to go home to my kids. You know, after I did therapy, I went back and I, I apologized to my kids and my ex-wife too. Well, what did you say? I just said I'm really sorry for what I did and I... I I hope you can forgive me, you know. And uh, they started crying immediately. So. Did they? Yeah. So, so I knew that it was, it was, 
that I'm, it was good that I did it because they realized that their, their strong dad can also make mistakes. But the main thing is that you have to, you have to owe up to it. Um, my wife started crying before I even, before I, I didn't even have to say half the sentence. He said sorry to my mom. He said sorry to us. Um, tough, tough conversation. I think more for my mom and my dad, it was great for them, I think, especially for my mom that he, you know, said sorry about a few things that he did that hurt her, which I also looked up to, you know, as a daughter, like, because obviously I was a bit angry at him at that age. It's important to see a guy being, respecting a woman and saying sorry and, you know, realizing that he's done wrong in some things, you know, that's very big. How has it been ever since? Well, it's been, my kids, they're very good now. They, they, they have been in therapy on and off when they have a problem, and they, they think it's completely normal, yeah. and I think it's great, you know. And I've been, I've had some issues with one, especially with my own, younger daughter, and we've been in therapy together. I hear she's more like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been in therapy together, and uh, Greta, and it's, Greta, and it's perfect, and and I love that the fact that they think it's perfectly okay. The trauma and all of those things that I've that fueled me, but I, they were also like, a, it was like a, a devil inside that I couldn't, I didn't know how to deal with it, you know, and these things can end badly for a lot of people. I mean, you know, people self-destruct in this business and it wouldn't, I wouldn't have been the first one and I was very close.